Here we are, the Flip Dragon Albion Adventure. Today we're playing Gearbox, and we are getting to the true ending. August 13th. I should probably write here more often. August 17th. Read about every book on Swedish folklore there is. Surprised how little there has been written about year walking. Need more sources of information. August 19th. Talk to E.S. He suggested some field work might be good, but I feel that, that might I might be 30 years too late. August 25th. Been talking to elderly folks, eating cookies and drinking coffee. Their knowledge about year walking has been limited, to say the least. Barely any of them know what it was. If they did, they had heard stories as children but forgotten the details. Thinking ES sent me in a wild goose chase. August 27th. Interviews at the retirement home. May I never grow old. Last interview was intriguing, but if very brief. Talk to one Astrid Jensen. She was over a hundred years old. Clear at times did not know a lot about folklore, but she did claim that her grandfather's brother had one, once year walked. Sadly, she did not know his name. He had died many years before she was born. Might have to look into it. Her maiden name was Fenson, which leaves me with a lot of possibilities. She was born in Veldorp, and I can only hope that her grandfather was as well. August 29th. More interviews. Nothing worth mentioning. Professor Asp called today. He heard, he hinted that faculty wanted to take part in my research. September 22nd. I can't read that, I'm sorry. Followed up my visit to the retirement home. In the early 20th century, there were six households in, in Veldro with the surname Svensson. According to the church book, Astrid was born in 1913. Her grandfather was named Carl Frederick. He had two brothers. One died in 1942. The other brother, Daniel Svensson, died in 1895. Since Astrid said that her great uncle died before she was born, Daniel is the one that supposedly year walked. A Miller, Miller apprentice going to the library to check out old newspapers tomorrow. September 4th. Look for a reference of Daniel Svensson in the newspapers. I'm grasping at straws. September 5th. Another day at the library. Nothing of interest. September 6th. Bored. I'm about to give up. Tire knife. Excited! The newspapers finally mention that Daniel Svensson. He was apparently arrested for the murder of a young woman in Veldorp. Okay, so I can read this and I can understand the gist of it, but I can't pronounce any of the words. Information is scarce. Her name was Nina Nielsen, and she was a miller's daughter. Her body was found in a field outside the village. She had been stabbed multiple times. The library should be open longer. I hope I can find my, any reference to this supposed year walk. The motive behind the murder seems to have been jealousy. Not many details. Apparently, Sina was going to marry Lucas Tapper. She was on her way home from Lucas' parents when she was intercepted by Daniel. She was found the following morning, just 17 years old. I feel a tad guilty about my excitement yesterday. After all, there is a great tragedy behind this. February 13th. The press seemed to have lost interest in the case for a while. I found nothing today. Maybe ES can tell me something. September 15th. I had a long talk on the phone with ES. The murder case was unknown to him. He had, however, spent a lot of time in Veldorp during the 60s when he studied folklore in the area. There had been a rather particular runestone 
This seemed to predate the Viking Age. E.S. claims that there was a definite connection between the symbols on the stone and your walking. He cannot tell how. Want to check it out. September 18th. Went to the library again in case I missed something about Daniel. Indeed I had. I found another article. Feeling upset and a bit sad. Borrowed the article just in case. Perhaps there's more to learn about Daniel. Booked a hotel room in Veldrop. September 26th. Arrived in Veldrop. It's a small place. One street cuts through the village. It's a rather depressing place, to be fair. The weather would not do any place justice. The hotel is empty. Besides me and a group of dog toy manufacturers who are a bit on the noisy side, must as the chef, the sh chef for the veal recipe, got a map from the hotel owner, excited about the archive, feeling that I will find something major. September 27th. Just got back from the archive. An interesting place. Sadly, it's only sadly it's only open four hours a day. It's understandable since I was the only visible visitor. Possibly found the files I need. Tomorrow, reading lots of it. September 28th. Luke. I knew it. The archive has exceeded my wildest dreams. On New Year's Eve, 1993, Daniel Svensson did indeed year walk. The court records refer to his year walk at several occasions. I had just started to scratch the surface. There must be beliefs hidden amongst these papers that have been forgotten for ages. Amazing. This is by far the latest recorded year walk. I hope I'm excused for borrowing the file from the archive. They gave me little choice since they are closed during the weekend. Looks... 29th. Cannot sleep. Back! Cannot sleep last night. Too excited by the files. Much of the records are a legal nature, but there are rele relevant passages. Daniel claimed he knew that he would murder Sinclair after seeing it in a vision on his ear walk. Sadly, the scribe is not bothered to take it all down. Occasionally just refers to as ramblings of a madman. Poor boy. These are certain there are certain elements that are new to me. Must write them down in detail later on. Need fresh air. Daniel's cabin in Saltstern is briefly mentioned in the protocol. We'll ask around about it. Hope it still exists. Will you get back? There's a dog holding my arm. September 30th. Drove around. He's pretty. Drove around for hours in the forest today. There, these woods are. These are woods to get lost in. Asked for directions from every local. Most people never heard of the cabin. I was about to give up when I met an old man. His aunt had lived there until the 60s. From then, it had three different owners that used it as a summer house until the mid 80s. The family that owned the cabin only stayed there one summer. Their five year old son drowned in a brook nearby, and they never returned. Nobody has lived there since. The old man's nephew owned the land. I asked the old man if I could pay it a visit. He did not think there would be anyone that would mind. Back! The cabin is situated deep in the forest. No sign, no road, just a narrow path. This was the place where he started his year walk over a hundred years ago. I felt overwhelmed by the thought. Cannot enter. It's a lonely place. The only other building I could find in the area was an underground storehouse. I guess it might have belonged to the cabin. It was too dark to see anything. I can't imagine there would be any significance there. On my way back to the car, I saw this strange box. What an odd thing to leave in the middle of the forest. It seems to be more or less in mint condition. Could not resist taking it. Tonight I need whiskey, and lots of it. I'm about to run out of time, so I will see you in the next video. It's getting so exciting.